I've gotten a little behind on my YouTube questions, so we're gonna do questions and answers today. First question asks, with respect to my video on how to use the Patent Center website to file a provisional patent application, is that patent application just for the USA? So when using the Patent Center portal at USPTO.gov, yes, this patent application is just for the United States. The patent application that you file here is not useful in other countries. That is to say, when the patent issues, your patent is only going to be valid for stopping infringement in the United States and not in other countries. However, the good news is that you can use the USPTO.gov website to file your patent applications from anywhere in the world, at least that is anywhere in the world that will allow you to get access to domains in the United States. I do understand that there are some locations in the world that don't allow access to some domain servers located in the United States. However, anecdotally, I do know that some of those users have been able to get access to the USPTO.gov website by using a VPN, that is a virtual private network. Now just beware that some countries have criminal laws that prevent users within that country from using VPN to gain access to domain servers outside of the country. Next question, Fan Up North asks, John, do you practice bird law? I didn't even know bird law was a thing. What kind of legal problems do birds have? Not trusted source leaves a comment. Set the playback speed to 1.25x. Thank me later. Okay, not trusted. I'm from Texas and slower is just the way we learn to speak. I've got a better suggestion for you. Why don't you put the speed at 1.5x and watch my video twice? Frederick Meadows asked the question, can I file a provisional patent application on a device that I haven't yet built? Do I need a working prototype or actual product in order to file a provisional patent application? The answer to this question is no. You do not need to have a prototype or a working model or product of your invention in order to be able to file a provisional patent application or even a utility application. The only requirement for you to file a patent application on your invention is for you to understand the invention, how to make the invention and how to use the invention and to be able to describe the invention in a written description and set of figures. Next question, I have filed a provisional patent application and then a year later converted the provisional patent application to a utility patent application. When the patent issues, how long does the patent last? Well, this is an interesting question and it's often confused because a patent lasts for 20 years from the filing date of the regular the utility patent application. So when you file your utility patent application, that is the non-provisional patent application, your patent that eventually issues will last for 20 years from the date of that utility patent application filing, plus any extension dates that you might get called term extension days that might accrue because of some holdup in the patent office or some delay that wasn't your fault. Now, what's interesting about this is that you file a provisional patent application, and then a year later, you file a non-provisional patent application, and the patent expires 20 years from the filing of the non-provisional patent application, or 21 years from the filing of the provisional patent application. So in, in essence, if you file a provisional patent application, you get an extra year of being able to say that you're either patent pending or patented. I just think that's an extra bonus you get when you file a provisional patent application first. RC Mob 73 asked the question, I filed a provisional patent application in 2013 and it expired because I didn't have the funds to file for a non-provisional patent application. Now I've improved my invention. Is it too late to file a provisional patent application to improve my original invention? There are two considerations that you need to think about when refiling a provisional patent application. The first question you need to ask yourself, 
Has there been a public disclosure since the filing of the original provisional patent application? That is, have you demonstrated or used your invention in public? Have you written something or published something about your invention to the public? Have you been to a trade show, for example, and exhibited your invention? Or have you offered your invention for sale to others? So long as you haven't disclosed your invention to the public, it may be possible for you to refile your provisional patent application. The second consideration is the existence of intervening rights by other inventors. If you file your provisional patent application and it expires, and then five years later, for example, you decide to file your provisional patent application again because you haven't made your invention public during that period, it's possible that an intervening inventor could have come in and filed their own patent application for the same invention, not having copied it from you, but having independently invented the same idea. Since we have a race to the patent office system in the United States, that is the first person to file a patent application gets the patent. And your provisional patent application has expired. If someone comes along later and files a different patent application for the same invention, then it would be possible for that person then to get credit and rights to the patent that would be granted on that invention. But assuming that you haven't disclosed your invention to the public, and assuming there's been no intervening inventor filing their own patent application for that invention, then it would be possible for you to refile your provisional patent application and get a new priority date based on the filing date of this new provisional patent application. To be clear, you don't get the filing date of the originally filed provisional patent application because that one expired, but you do get the priority date or the filing date of the refiling of the provisional patent application. Now you mentioned you made some improvements to your invention, and this would be an ideal time to include those improvements in the refiled provisional patent application. Michael Schuler asked the question, if I have two-dimensional drawings or photographs and they're clear and sufficiently detailed, would it likely be judged as adequate evidence of disclosure if I leave out the reference numbers on the drawings? So Michael, what I understand that you're asking is, you have drawings or photographs of your invention and you also have a written description of your invention, how your invention works, how it's made, and how it's used. But what you're missing in your provisional patent application is you don't have the reference numbers identifying each of the parts in your photographs or drawings and tying those to the text in the written description as you would normally do in a formal utility application. Well, the answer to your question is that reference numerals are not required on your drawings or photographs as they are in a formal non-provisional patent application or utility application. Provisional patent applications are informal. We just need to be able to understand if and when we go back and look at your provisional patent application later that you owned the invention and you understood the invention at the time that you filed the provisional patent application. We can look at the drawings, we can look at the specification. If you have photographs, we can look at those as well. But the point is, do you have an understanding and ownership of the invention that's being described? Thomas Stevens writes, I've invented a perpetual motion machine that finds golf balls. Well, that's awesome. If you could just find my lost golf balls and resell them, you could probably make a fortune. Good invention. The next question is from Ron Young. Ron writes, what if your product is easy to duplicate and someone copies it and sells it for two to three years before you have any patent rights? Well, Ron, I have two suggestions in dealing with this problem. First of all, it is possible to get patent rights that predate the issuance of your patent. In an earlier video, I talk about patent rights that can accrue following the publication of your patent application and following actual notice given to an infringer. Now this is a little technical and you'll need some help from your patent attorney. 
But if you give actual notice to a patent infringer, once your patent publishes, it may be possible to collect damages all the way back to the time of the actual notice, so long as the patent issues and the claims have not substantially changed from the time that you gave actual notice to the time when the patent actually issues. A second category of patent applications that the Patent Office will consider taking out of turn include patent applications that are especially useful or important to the public. And these might be related to energy savings or environmental protection or inventions in support of counterterrorism. These are just a few of the examples. A second way that you can accelerate your patent application in the Patent Office is to file a Track 1 accelerated application, which involves the payment of some extra fees. By paying the Track 1 acceleration fees, your patent application gets moved to the head of the line and can often be very quickly examined with a patent issued often within a year of filing your patent application. Okay, that's all the questions and comments for today. My name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley patent attorney. If you need help with your company's patents or your company's patent portfolio, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at the email address below. If you have comments or questions, leave them in the comments section. I love reading them and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and staying to the end of this video. I'll see you on the next one.